Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here. I want to welcome you back to my Twine series, and in this episode, I'm going to be covering story formats. But before we before we dive into the nitty gritty, I thought I'd show you a Twine game I recently discovered. It's called Bill Belichick Off Scene si Off Season Simulator, and this is brought to you by SB Nation, as you can see right here. And it's a it's a humorous take on Bill Belichick. If you don't know who Bill Belichick is, he's the head coach for the Patriots. And he's known to being somewhat, shall we say, determined person. And this sort of makes fun of him. It's a simulation which will end in if detected if you are not living, living true to the principles of the Bill Belichick system. So it's really just kind of a gag game, but let's just try it out. When you start this off, there's a very long progress bar that runs across. It's, I've never seen a Twine game so big, so I'm curious to know what they're actually doing. So we can click and begin. It is all dark. It is 4 a.m. It is time to get up. We'll get up. And you can see it's got these humorous images here. You rock yourself forward and backward until your Murphy bed gains enough momentum to swing you to the floor with a crash. Good morning, Bill. And it goes on like this. And if you do things that are not Bill Belichick-like, you may get in trouble. So here it is. Your sleeping arrangement is a monument to efficiency. You call it your Bill bed. Look upon how much floor space you have saved. These things are th these are the things that make you happy. In fact, it might be just time to sing a song. Here you can say, it's, it's the Bill bed. My name is Bill. Will you sing with me? I hope that you will. Sing the song with me. And we'll get out of bed here. And this is the point where, I, I won't read through this passage, but this is a whole bunch of clothes, and you have to put on your clothes by swimming through them. And you, and you can choose which stroke you want to do. So let's do the backstroke. You can see, without visibility, you will not be able to live by the principles of Bill, the Bill Belichick system. What a strange decision. You have dressed yourself as a normal person might. And there it goes. Game over. And you can play again. I'll add a link to this. It's pretty amusing. Twine game. And it seems to have been getting a lot of press lately. So, interesting, to say the least. Okay. We're going to close this. And we're going to go back to our story of Derelict. Previously, when in my when I first started this series, I briefly mentioned story story formats, and the reason was is I was somewhat new to Twine too, and the reason I actually started this this tutorial series was a way for me to get to know Twine because I'm porting my current projects into Twine too. So I've been really undertaking this, and I made a made a slight error in my first video. In fact, if I click here, you can see change story format. So when I first was doing this, I made the assumption that story formats were things that changed the look and feel of your story, because that's what you would think a story, well, that's what you think format indicates. You would write a passage, and then you would format it. You may give certain words italics, you may indent certain words, you may increase the spacing between words, and so forth. But in Twine, they really misnamed this. This shouldn't be called story format. It actually should be called a story interpreter. Because you can see here, a story format controls the appearance and behavior of your story during play. And right now, for some reason, I'm not getting the stories formats. Here they go. They're a little slow. And you can choose all the different formats you want. And this is going to directly affect how you will code in Twine. So if you choose a story format that, say, it has a lot more coding, you may not be a happy twiner, you might want to say. We've been working entirely in Harlow, and this is the default story format. It's the format we know and love. We do the set here, and you can see we, we have all, the, all these things. And, twi and excuse me, Harlow was designed for you to get into writing for Twine without trying to learn a whole lot of code. In fact, let's just check out the documentation. I have it here, open in this tab. And out of all the story formats, this is probably the best documentation. And you can see here, it's just one page. And, it, and it's given a whole, it breaks down all of how Harlow is actually is run. So it's really useful. And I highly suggest that now that you've gone through the series, or if you've gone through the series one at a time, 
you should have enough information to go to this documentation page and now start understanding what some of these things mean. It's not exactly, if you don't have any computer programming experience, it may be a little bit still, a little bit obscure. For instance, in array indexing, this doesn't, this won't really make sense to you. Rather than where it says is performed using, using the possessive operators uh, apostrophe s rather than the bracket syntax. And that makes more sense if you have a computer background programming. But we're going to be covering arrays in the next episode. And hopefully I'll shed a little light on that. But for the most part, we've encountered a lot of these things and you should have enough knowledge to be able to now start breaking this down. And Harlow in itself is designed, as I said, primarily for you to write your stories and not think about code. You, It's kind of like focus purely on the content. And when there is code, try to make it as useful or as intuitive as possible. So that's Harlow. Let's check out the other ones. So I really, yeah, I really wish they changed this, not the story format, the story interpreter. That changes everything. Let's go to Snowman. Snowman is a minimal story format. And by minimal, it is minimal. Let's see what happens when we try to play our game. You can see nothing happens. And the reason is that it's interpreting our code in here and it's seeing these and it's it's just causing syntax errors, which which I assume is causing the, the twine system to break down. So it can't even process this stuff. Let's check out Snowman's documentation. You can see this is about it. It's really just a forum post on twinery.org. And basically, the author here is saying he just wants to provide a way to give you access to J um, JavaScript and CSS and then get out of your way. And he gives some examples here, so there's no macros. It's here we have a set macro, and I'll cover this in just a moment. This is a different, this is another story format. And then he uses this, the state dot candies equals two. And this is a, really a JavaScript. It's written in the style, it, it actually is JavaScript. And you can see down here, it's the same thing. So it's very interesting. Basically, it's giving you just the framework to write your code in Twine, and then you're gonna do everything yourself. And we can see, I think this is the actual code source. And there, there's literally, I, before I was recording this video, I was looking for documentation for this. I could not find really much of anything. And so I decided to come to the source, and I opened up, so right here, this is the source tree for it. You can see the CSS, this is JavaScript, and lib stands for libraries. If we open this up, you'll see that these are just libraries that are included with this. This is jQuery, which is a popular library used on the web. Uh, this is a JSON library. So these are third-party libraries that wasn't developed by the author of Snowman. So we're interested in this .js, and you can see there's only three JavaScripts in here. There's an init, there's a passage, and a story. And these things are really small. So this is really, if you have a lot of HTML, you have a lot of JavaScript and CSS, you may want to jump right into this because it's really bare bones. I'm not too sure if I'm going to be covering this in this series. And the reason is that this requires a lot of background information. It requires you to get up to speed with CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, and that could be a long endeavor, so I'm still debating about that. The final one we have is SugarCube. SugarCube is another story format, and this is sort of in between both Harlow and Snowman. Basically, it's using, it has its own format, and it's based off of the previous Twine format, and you can see here, these are all the macros. These are, I shouldn't say all the macros. These are some of the macros that you can use. And this is well documented as well. And we can open up here and you can see we have a whole bunch of stuff here. It has its own save system. It, you can see we have macros and story macros and so forth. So it's a little bit different way of writing your Twine stories. And if you, you've written Twine stories from the old, the Twine 1, 
one three branch or one four branch, then this will be very, very familiar. Let's go into derelict here and we're going to change our story format to sugar cube. I'm going to close this and let's run and see what happens. Here you can see we have a whole new different look and feel. We have saves built right in. We have a restart system. And again, we'll see our Harlow code now showing up. So it's seeing this and it's just printing it out. It doesn't know how to interpret it. So we can go through here. We'll open our eyes. You can see more Harlow code. We'll roll out of bed and so forth. And you can see again, everything. So basically, if you wanted to use the story format and you've written your story in Harlow, you're going to have to rewrite everything to, it, to use Sugarcube. I'll be covering Sugarcube probably next, and we'll be going through all these things and porting this story to use Sugarcube. Now, there's one more story format, and it's, it's designed to work specifically with mobile, and that's called Tin Cans. I haven't really looked too much into that. And by default, it's not included with our story formats. But I'm guessing in the next few months, we'll see it appear in this story format dialog box. And when it does, I'll give a breakdown of how it works. For now, we're going to continue with this series using Harlow. And my recommendation for you, if you have a question about what story format to use, I would suggest you stick with Harlow. Keep working with it and see and try to try to see how much how much you can do with it. Once you start hitting limitations, then you have to determine, well, is Harlow really for you? And if it's not, then I may upgrade to Sugarcube. At, but if you do have the development experience, then it may be worth, worth going with Snowman. But you should always have in mind which story format you want to choose before writing your story because it can be a little bit time expensive to start with Harlow and then say switch to Sugarcube because then you're going to have to rewrite all your Twine code all over again. I hope this has been insightful for you or been knowledgeable and or helped you out it's something that I don't think is very well documented. And again, I wish they would change this from story format to story interpreter. I think that would make it make people realize that this is a really important decision, very much like what graphic engine you want your 3D game to run on. Well, that's it for this, uh, this one. I th the next episode, what we're going to do is cover arrays in Harlow and cover also, we're going to be diving into some of the, uh, some of the, some of the macros that I haven't covered yet. And we'll wrap up that series. And believe it or not, we have a whole lot more to cover. So I, again, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you've been learning, and I look forward to reading your Twine games soon. See you next time.